Thank you so much for coming to our session. It's after lunch, and we know sometimes um, that's hard to come back after lunch and attend a session, so we appreciate you coming. Um, my name is Diane Sorden. I am our CTED, which in Northern Arizona, um, in Flagstaff, it's caveat. And this is my colleague, uh, Lawrence Watson. You want to tell me about your responsibilities? I can tell you about my responsibilities. I'm, I'm here wearing a few different hats. I'm here as the test coordinator at Flagstaff High School, and I'm also the math department chair, so I, I sort of view the ACT activities that we do from a logistical perspective, but also a curricular and, and teaching perspective as well. And as the caveat um, CTE counselor, the college and career indices um, is my responsibility, so that's why um, I'm helping Lawrence with this presentation. So in starting off, um, we're talking about what is ROI and what does it mean to us as an educational system. And so I went and did some research on who are the leading researchers on educational systems and a return on your investment. And what does it look like? How do you measure if you're getting a quantifiable return on your investment? And so Frank Covey is one of the leading researchers on um, educational systems and return on your investment. And what his research says is that your system needs a shared core belief or an identifiable core need. The system needs to be able to evaluate range of options to meet that core need. There needs to be access to data, different kinds of metrics, and in education we talk about those a lot as key performance indicators. You need to be able to look at the options and the resources and then make decisions on how you're going to move forward. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how Flagstaff High School got where we are now. And we don't have all the answers. Um, we're learning from everybody else, too. We've just been in this college knowing and going process since 2009 in our district. And so there's, we've seen a lot of change throughout those years. Um, you know, first of all, just talking about um, No Child Left Behind and what impact that had on Arizona. Um, again, we heard at lunch the talk about um, the 2008 state mandate. It is an unfunded mandate, but the mandate that every student in every high school in Arizona should leave our systems with an education and career action plan. And those action plans need to be a, a discovery, an opportunity for, take, for students to take coursework that leads to, um, maybe it's certification, maybe it's a work-based learning experience, but coursework that is meaningful to those students and to, whatever, to explore whatever opportunities they would like post-secondarily. That ECAP also houses assessment data, whether it's interest inventories, or looking at um, student performance on tests like the ACT. And then allowing students to have those extension activities, so taking what they think they want to do in high school and then maybe turning that into an opportunity to do some dual enrollment or an opportunity to go shadow at a business. And so this unfunded mandate actually was a key turning point in Arizona um, and has allowed us to really see some returns on our investments. The other key point was our AIMS test. And so as a counselor, a long time counselor, um, the AIMS test what allowed us to um, look at, not necessarily curricularly, how are our students doing because it was a test of minimal proficiency, but there was some carrot attached to that of now. The third factor for us in Flagstaff is that in 2009, and I think I still have a copy of the letter, believe it or not, because it was um, hard to believe, but we got this letter from Helios, and they said, Dear FUSD, we are interested in um, creating greater access for your students to post-secondary education, and so we would like to fund your ACT test for all juniors in your school district um, this spring. What do you think? Do you want to be part of that partnership? And of course we, res we responded with a resounding yes. This is what we would love to do that at 100 percent. 
Um, those of you that know a little bit about Flagstaff know that we have a very large indigenous community. We border the Navajo Nation. Um, our particular high school has a dorm. So we have students who come to live in our Kinlani border town dorm and attend Flagstaff High School. And so being able to offer those students a free ACT on a test date at our school site was a game changer for us and absolutely helped us to reflect on our return on the investment for every single student in our school and school district. Because Helios came into the picture, then there was also this college knowing and going aspect. So looking at what services we could um, gather from the Northern Arizona College Resource Center, it was pretty, um, pretty amazing what resources and partnerships we could build with them. So the first time that we truly looked at our ROI were those years after 2008 and 2009, and we felt like we were doing really well as counseling departments in both of our, our high schools. Um, at that time, we were three high schools, but still looking at um, what, was the, what were we able to achieve with our students as far as post-secondary success. Our students were gathering a large number of scholarships and they were matriculating into college and they were succeeding in college. Um, and then we kind of got complacent, right? And in 2015, we started again re-examining our data and we started saying to ourselves, wait a minute, because now, guess what, that Ames carrot has gone away. In 2015, there was minimal scholarship available to students in Arizona if they, the Ames test was actually like on its way out. We were looking at the AZ Merit, and there was no carrot, right? Um, and so testing was difficult. It was a difficult piece of that ECAP process. And so in looking at that data, we had to face some hard facts. Our students in their ECAP process were still saying, hey, we want to go to college. That is definitely in our um, post-secondary plan. But we started saying only 49% of our student population is actually matriculating. And then, because the cost of college had increased at a percentage of about 19%, our students were undermatching. Students who before might have chosen universities outside of even Flagstaff, now we're choosing to go to our local community college, stay at home, and uh, go to school at NAU or CCC. And then we start looking at 10 to 12 percent of our FHS graduates were not even persisting long enough to earn a degree. These were the stone cold facts. We thought we were doing so well, right? We had this great return on our investment. Our core belief was about getting these kids to post-secondary. And then here's the stark reality. Here's what's really happening for our students. So what did we do? We brought in our ASCAN partners. And we, as counseling staff, we took the ASCAN survey. And we said, what are our core beliefs? What do we feel like our jobs, our role, our responsibility here in this school is to do? And you can see that our counseling focus, as determined by the ASCAN survey, said that counselors were really focused on ECAP, 9 through 12. We were focused on FAFSA completion. Our priority was we were the test proctors. It was us. AIMS before, now ACT. Um, we were responsible, sole responsible people in our school for scholarship and those social emotional needs of our students. So then we asked Mr. Cullen, our principal, we said, Mr. Cullen, can we give this survey to our faculty? Do you think that would work? And he was like, yeah, let's do it, right? So we gave this same exact survey to our faculty. And our faculty said that their roles and responsibilities were to make sure that their curriculum was at state standards, to meet AZ merit scores for students, they needed to focus on student attendance, student grades, and they were overall the content specialists. Now, no one in our school disagreed with that, we, but we wanted to see if we could make both ends come to the middle so that we are working as a school community on helping these students 
to not just master state standards and not just master the AZ merit, but to actually be prepared for post-secondary. And we continue to this day to take the ASCAN survey um, every fall and every spring to see how close we are um, joining in our focus and our core beliefs. One of the other things we did, because as many of you know, the ratios of counselors to students is astronomical in this state, right? And so we as counselors, or even as teachers, can't do this all by ourselves. So it definitely came down to what capacity can we build? What partnerships can we look for? And so Helios has always been a partner. Um, and so we continued to foster that relationship. ACT, we continue to pursue Stephanie Lewis and what kind of partnership can we build with ACT? How can they help us? How can we use our data? How can we analyze the data we're getting um, to be more meaningful? Again, I work for the CTED and so involving those caveat dollars in um, moving our students forward was super important. Providing those dual enrollment opportunities um, to strengthen that ECAP and then also to get that knowledge about college knowing and going into our students while they were at high school and they could be successful in that high school arena with all of the supports <coughs> available. We heavily relied on ASCAN and the Northern Arizona College Resource. They still come into our school. At, um, Roxanne used to be our um, access partner director and she would come in and teach lessons with our counselors. And then every Wednesday we have what we call Reach Higher Wednesday and our access partners come in and they would follow up with individual students on the FAFSA or on other college knowing and going aspects of the ECAP. We have launched in our community, which is a P20 initiative, and we have really tried to bring Paul Kopinski, who is our launch um, CEO, into our building as many times as possible during professional development to talk to our teachers and then be advocates for our teachers. We partner with Wells Fargo. They provide these little books that are pretty great that walk the students through what is that college um, going process. Whether it's community college, whether it's tech or trade, whatever the dream is, then Wells Fargo, um, they have these nice little booklets and pamphlets that walk them through. They're in English, they're in Spanish, um, and help our students. Even to think about what are those things that you probably should have on hand as you're headed off to your post-secondary um, opportunity, whether again it's a tech or trade school, whether it's a community college or whether it's a university, whether those things you should have at hand. Um, looking at our dual enrollment, we've expanded our dual enrollment opportunities and possibilities in our school and then looking at how can we partner with NAU, we have a CC, uh, FUSD, CCC to NAU math consortia that kind of talks about, because that's where students struggle most at the post-secondary level, is in math. So we have those meetings regularly, and one of <coughs> us attends always. And then we have a bunch of TRIO programs that have always been in existence, but we brought in some additional. And then we have staff member who is also involved in our one of our TRIO programs. And then this really <coughs> sweet thing happened to us because we posted some stuff at the ADE website about being an exempt, uh, and we were recognized at, at Flagstaff High School as an exemplary counseling program. And so um, we got this call from Kay Schreiber and this organization, um, this laboratory called REL West. And REL West called us and they said, so we've picked school sites in Southern Arizona, in Maricopa County, and then in Northern Arizona, and we'd like to come and we'd like to talk to you, we'd like to interview your teachers and your students, and we'd like to see where you are in this college knowing and going process. And so they came up and they met with us, and their data was showing basically what the ASCAN data had shown also. That um, counselors were definitely focused on the ECAP, and our teachers were focused on classroom and content. And we really weren't meshing those, like teachers would, counselors would come in to teach, and teachers would take it as an extra prep, instead of all of us co-teaching and embedding that in our curriculum. And so the results didn't surprise us, but what did surprise us is before they left, 
Rel West said to us, but you keep us informed. Like, we know that you're trying to move the needle on this. We know that you're trying to do differently. And so we'd like to stay in the loop and we'd like to continue to work with you. And to this day, this has been a two year partnership to this day, Thomas came here today. He flew in to be with us um, at this conference and to participate and to listen and to be part of what we are doing today. We also had another grand opportunity just because of some of these partnerships and again because of um, those of you who don't know, uh, our department chair, Catherine Pastor, was the 2016 um, Counselor of the Year for Arizona. And she met a lot of great people in her White House, you know, going to the White House and giving her speech. And um, she connected with a lot of uh, in people who have influence. And so we got invited, our district actually got invited to attend this National Post-Secondary Strategy Institute in Chicago. And it was with all of the Chicago Public Schools directors. And so hearing those people um, was super important for us in how to move forward and our partnership with Rel West. So it continue, we continue to look for partnerships and how we can um, work with other people and other organizations in our community to build that capacity. So what did all this mean for us? Well, we go back to Hobie and what he says. And so what Rel West and what all these other partners launch um, and um, our own core group at school, we've come up with our mission statement. And we have shared this um, throughout our school community. It's on everything that comes out in our documentation now. Graduating all students prepared to harness post-secondary success. Okay? And our core value is graduating all students all prepared for post-secondary success. And what did that mean for us? When we started taking a look at the range of options, we decided readily that AZ Merit was not meeting the options we needed for our students. It wasn't the resource that we needed. It wasn't allowing our teachers to drill down and look at curriculum, and it wasn't providing us that longitudinal data that we really needed. And it was kind of disrupting the conversation because our teachers were focused on AZ Merit and our counselors were focused on ACT. And so it was a disruption. So our principal, Mr. Cullen, um, he's kind of a risk taker. And we asked him if there was possibility to move away from AZ Merit because we had the score and move on to the menu of assessment. And uh, it's costly. I'm not going to lie, but Mr. Cullen is always the guy with optimism and he says, we'll make it happen, right? And so we were prepared to go um, on our own and as a school uh, individually fund this. But then Mr. Cullen went to our administrative team and he said, this is what we want to do. What do you all think? And our other school partners in our district said, oh yeah, we're on board. We want to do this too. And so luckily then our district pitched in, and it's not all on Mr. Cullen's plate, but um, the KPIs that we're getting, even right now, and Lawrence is going to talk about that, um, from our Aspire data, because here's the thing. We know that the menu of assessments said, all you need to do is that junior ACT test that Helios is paying for, but we also knew that that wasn't going to get us the data that we so desperately wanted to build this community um, of counselors and teachers and admin and students um, that were focused on college knowing and going. And to get the greatest return on our investment, we had to have everybody on the same page. Again, continuing to look at those partnerships, um, working with those people outside of our school community, to look at how can we um, make this sustainable if by chance our district can't help us. Um, and so looking at adding a small testing fee, we're so glad that it's not technology dependent, and Lawrence is going to talk about that, and that we're moving towards a whole community commitment to um, getting our students prepared to harness post-secondary success wasn't easy to come to this decision and it's greater than what the state asks of us 
but we feel like it's been a leap of faith and it's been one that is um, data rich and has allowed us to be data informed and build a solid strategic plan for our students in our school and school district. So instead of seeing that position where counselors are doing one thing and teachers are doing another, we actually have this FHS Flagstaff High School community where we're focused on our college and career ready indices. We're focused on ECAP. If you were to walk our hallways today, many of our, our teachers can answer, what is CCRI? What are some of those indicators? They can answer that question. They can now identify what is an ECAP. Right? When asked that question, it's not lost on them anymore. We have ACT, we're working, our assistant principal, Ms. Pete, is working diligently with all of our department chairs to try to help us align ACT content in all areas. She even came to our current technical education meeting and our teachers felt a little overwhelmed, like what was their responsibility towards this ACT test? And she quickly told them, it's about how you ask questions and it's about vocabulary, and it's about making those students read those manuals and look at text complexity. That's your responsibility, that's your role in this, um, as a stakeholder in this um, retire initiative. Our <coughs> professional development is very focused on college and career ready, it's focused on, we've had ACT in, we've had launch in, Lawrence and I have done presentations to faculty, we're really talking deeply about FAFSA completion and where it can be embedded in our content. But our seniors won't show up on that day. It's just an all-day testing, and we'll have early release after testing is completed. And so every teacher in our building, it's not just counselors anymore that are issuing the test. It's every teacher, every parapro, every person who works in our school and school district will be a part of this testing opportunity for students. It's all hands on deck, and it makes everybody accountable to the student success. We're looking at authentic interventions. How can we use this data to intervene with our students and intervene earlier? And honestly, we've been talking with some of our um, middle school and elementary partners to try to see if we can not even push some of the Aspire and some of those early college readiness testing into some of the lower grades. And, um, Lawrence's amazing wife, who's one of our English teachers, she developed this whole ACT boot camp with these incredible videos that really walk our students through how they can strategically approach the ACT. And we've been sharing that through what we call an ACT boot camp. We're still actively participating with all of our partners that are helping us again to further our ECAP, our FAFSA completion, scholarships, all of our retire initiatives and advocacy. And like I said, our Rail West partners are here today. Um, Thomas is here listening, talking to um, people with us and helping us figure this out. And because we're not taking a full month to do the AZ Merit, we were able to do the ASVAB test for all of our juniors, which has a concordance table to ACT. We were able to use that data to help our students move forward. We're hoping that because we're addressing questions for the ACT in our content um, alignment sessions that our end of program results for CTE are going to come out better. CT doesn't talk very directly yet to teachers in the classroom and I think that's a communication aspect, that curriculum component that we're going to have to really work on as a school. You know, and I think that's where as educators we'll have an opportunity maybe to teach ACT a little bit about how they can serve us in that component as well. I think that's part of the stagnation. We have a lot of curricular changes mandated by the state, but we don't have a whole lot of input um, and, and back and forth with ACT quite yet, you know, and we're developing that, that relationship. So I think, you know, I could talk for three hours about that alone. Um, but what we did need was some summative data, some longitudinal data. We weren't getting that from Arizona Merit. We don't need to go down that road. I think we're all aware of what those reports look like. Um, and we need some testing systems that, that were better in line, you know, and the ACT fit that goal very well. It wasn't something that we felt like was a sidestep to what we were already doing. Um, it is the only test, I don't want to say it's the only test out there in the whole world, but it was the only test we had available and access to that, that we really knew that fit our college career ready goals. Um, and it was l very literally tied to those goals. Um, we could use it to inform our curriculum without dramatic shifts in, in what we were doing. It has support systems, which we'll try to discuss a little bit. 
Um, we wanted to create a viable curriculum for everybody, which was difficult when you don't have a good measuring system. You know, you don't want to do everything with respect to your measuring system, but you do need to have a way to know whether or not what you're doing is accomplishing your goals. And we needed, we needed to create equity. We felt like Arizona Merit actually was pointing out where there was a lot of inequity, but it wasn't informing us in such a way that we could, we could um, attack our equity issues. So and I'm sort of like in this mind unraveling state right now because April 2nd is, is coming up very quick. And I'm going to share with you because we presented in October here and a lot of things have happened since then. I wouldn't say our, that things have changed so much as we've got some new information now, some new things that we've learned since then. I'll try to kind of share what our experience is if you are going to be in the process of this down the road here. But we've adopted the ACT battery of tests, English, math, um, science, and reading for ninth grade. Um, and what we wanted was we needed a formative component. We felt like we needed a summative component. Well, the ACT is, you know, summative in the, in the most um, intense sense of the word. But what we needed was something better. Right now what students are doing, you know, or let's just say last year's students, they come in as freshmen, they fiddle around with Arizona Merit, they wouldn't get a lot of ACT readiness support, the focus was on a sort of a different alignment of standards and things like that in the classroom. Their sophomore year, they'd deal with that again. Their junior year, in the middle of April, they'd take all their Arizona Merit AP exams and squeeze an ACT in there. And whether they were able to get prepared outside of class or anything like that, we, we simply didn't have the resources or the ability to, to provide them with that focus. So what students right now are doing is as a freshman, we're going to get formative Aspire data. There's a couple different versions of Aspire. There's a summative and an interim test. Right now we're using the, the interim test. More frequent, less high stakes. Because we're looking for that cross the year data, cross the year growth, individual, what, what content are we lacking, where do we need to improve kind of thing. Um, but, um, where am I here? I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Um, and, we, and we have um, this immediate data as well. We're not waiting until the end of the year, you know, doing, the, my dad was a superintendent. He used to always say he felt like the Ames was an autopsy, right? He'd say, we're, we're digging through the guy, but he's, he's already dead, you know? And so, um, I was like, thanks, thanks for that, dad. I'll need that one day. So I just used it. So, but, but that's, you know, that's very much how we begin to feel. You know, you make a change for the following year. But what did that do for your students that year, you know? And so we think about these kids this year, these freshmen right now, are in the process already of understanding better how they'll be assessed summatively in a couple of years um, at, at a high level. And, and will they be better prepared? Absolutely. I, I, I look back and I think and I feel like a little bit of, um, I don't know if guilt's the right word, but I look back at some of these students and I'm like, how much better could you have done? How much better could we have done for you? you know, on this if we weren't, you know, sidestepping into these other areas where he, we had to devote so much energy for, for quite frankly, what was a mandate, not a personal value or something that we felt like was in our educational goals. Um, I will say right now, one of the nice uh, Aspire uh, interim test um, features that we've got is the data comes back the, the second you give it. It's an online test, which I, I've had issues with online, but because it is a little bit a little bit less high stakes and stuff. We're able to work it into our system. It fits. We're able to get our freshman kids through it. And we get that data back. That by the next day, we can look and see how they performed. We got that data out to teachers. Teachers could see where kids are. We actually have a lot of parent interest in this. And I want, I want to share this and emphasize this a lot, is stakeholder buy-in is so important. I think the ACT, so I, you know, I, I thought people would be happy to move away from the Arizona Merit. It's, it's so much less disruptive to do what we're doing now. But I'm, I'm very surprised in a good way at how much people are willing to go out of their way to support this at our school. It's been a very powerful rallying point, like Diane spoke to. Things, things that are peripheral to the ACT, like ECAP and things like that, now have come into focus for the entire staff. And, and so um, the ACT is just a test, but it's an important tool in our arsenal of what we do. And, and so it has um, streamlined some of our processes, I think, and allowed people to, to focus. And our modern language department can say, well, these reading standards make sense to us. You know, we can we can help target this better. And, you know, and, and um, they weren't able to do that before. We weren't able to articulate that as a school very very well before. Um, but that part of that is that that accessible data, that immediate data. It's all our stakeholder groups, parents are buying into it. Our district level people can get can get real quick information about how our programs are doing at the schools, and and we simply did not have that before. And I think it was. 
a component that when you're trying to um, assess the efficacy of what you're doing, if you don't have some feedback in there, you're, you're not going to be able to do that, right? So here's kind of our, our vision was we needed some, some data with our freshmen, um, and we have sort of a more summative component. We've, we're going to try the pre-ACT this year. If you were to go to the ACT suite, you'd have a lot of options. There's a summative test for 10th grade. It goes all the way back down to third grade. I've, I've actually looked at the third grade test because I have a first grader right now, and I was interested to see where ACT expects him to be in a couple years. Um, and my understanding is that our district, I'm speaking on behalf of district people because nobody's here from the district. I just sort of, I heard this by accident the other day, but I'm going to share it with everybody. Our district actually has been monitoring what the high schools are doing, and there's a lot of conversation now about our elementaries possibly moving to this suite. And, and if, you, if you were to make a list right now of every test you give, it's probably going to take up three or four pages, and you're going to say, how much in line are these items? And there's probably not going to be a lot of alignment. So what we're trying to do is streamline that and say, are, are we, is the test I give today related to the test tomorrow? You know, and Ketcher spoke a lot to that. You know, how do we measure that growth? Well, the state may have some issues with that, but at least as a local institution, we can find that for ourselves, hopefully. So pre-ACT for us, um, this may change in the future, I don't know, um, but what we want is sort of a final evaluation of curriculum up to that 10th grade year, and then boom, next year's the big show, guys, you know? Um, and it's also a good proxy for the ACT. Um, we haven't given the pre-ACT yet. We've, we've never actually gone through this process. That's coming up. I'm working on setting up a system for testing. I'll, I'll explain kind of how that's going to look to you all just because um, I'm sure you're really excited to hear. Um, ACT for all 11th grade students. We've been testing all our 11th graders, but now that's our focus. And, um, and for all of us um, in, the, in that uh, system here, we're no longer sidestepping half of the month of April, you know, let's go back into your math classroom, let's take an Algebra 2 test, let's go take your ACT test. And so it's kind of nice to, to just focus and say, hey, this thing that actually really mattered for college interest, let's focus on that right now. Um, meaningful for students and obviously the important measure for college career readiness. Diane mentioned we started an ACT boot camp, which has been eight weeks. We had some snow days, so I'm a little, we, we kind of started an eight week ACT boot camp where we have some videos where we're talking about testing strategies, which are very important on the ACT, understanding that pacing. How do I, you know, how do I learn to skip around questions, identify things that are difficult, things like that. Our students have been working through that. We've actually created a school-wide advisory system. What's cool about that too is our freshman students, in spite of the fact they don't take the ACT, are still learning these strategies. They're still seeing what ACT type questions look like, and our sophomores as well. With them thinking down the road after having seen a little bit of that, being very used to that, applying those strategies is going to be very valuable. And that's, that's one of the things we hope we see. Um, that being said, we don't want to be an ACT prep school. Our goals are curricular. Um, I, I, I kind of view it this way. You can be a coach. You can have your, you can have your game plan, right? You might have your philosophy about how you run your team. We run a 3-4 defense, right? But if we got to play zone to beat these guys, we're going to do that. And that's sort of how I feel about it. There's nothing wrong with getting your kids ready for the test um, because that's not our focus. Our focus is curricular. Like I said, I could go on for three hours about curricular stuff. But um, that's, that's something we wouldn't have been able to do in the past. It would have been hard to justify that amount of time and resource knowing that Arizona Merit was right around the corner, you know, knowing that we had all these other other things to, to worry about. Um, so pleasant surprises, a uh, return on investment. So Diane did say it does cost some money. You know, Aspire's not free. The state's not funding all this quite yet. It sounds like there might be some money for certain things down the road. But that was sort of news to me today a little bit. Um, but I want to talk about scholarship money. Uh, that's, that can be a very kind of nebulous thing because we're like, we know it's out there. We actually had a faculty member share um, her daughter needed another point on the ACT and she was going to pay the money and retake the test for $3,500 more on her scholarships. And I'm like, okay, well, let's do some math here. At our school, we spent for our Aspire test about five grand. One more kid and we, we've returned our investment and made a little more, right? I'm a math teacher, so I can do that kind of math, right? So um, there is a literal return on the investment for your students when you put this money into it. We know that funding an educational system has a return for students. Um, but it, it was, that, that was such a powerful statement. I'm so glad that person shared that because you very often don't have a dollar amount to put to it. And I was like, there it is right there. 
I'm looking, I'm, I just got, I had the PO in my hand, you know, and I'm like, so there it is. It was, it was worth it. All we need is one more person to make it, make it a, um, a payoff. Student placement per Aspire results. We've had a lot of conversation with our departments of how can we use this to help place students in the correct classes better? When Ames went away, we used to use in our district Explore, um, which was the kind of the precursor to Aspire and everything, and then those things kind of faded away. Um, Ames went away, and we didn't have any measures other than grades about where to place kids. And grades are, are useful, but it's, it's nice to have some data points for conversation. Um, it's minimally disruptive. That was one of the big selling points for, for faculty. Right now we're in a sprint. We got rid of a marathon, but we definitely traded it for a sprint, and it's a sprint with like an 80-pound bag on your back is what it feels like. Uh, April 2nd is going to be a bear, um, probably by April 4th. I think I already took Friday off. I might take the 4th off too. <laughs> but, um, um, we, and we get this meaningful reporting. And so I think this may be a good, a good time to kind of talk about what our April 2nd day is going to look like. So at Coconino High School and at Flagstaff High School, we're going to do a district-wide testing day. And that AC, April 2nd is the ACT day, as you all know. Um, but what we're also going to do is test our second round of Aspire testing at Flagstaff High School and our pre-ACT that same day. Our district has been very helpful with, with kind of allowing us to try some different things with this. And one of the things we're going to do is have our seniors stay home that day. We're, we're making it an event. Okay, and this, this is what the Ames test sort of used to be like. You may remember a lot of schools had some creative ways of, of doing this. Um, and uh, we'll have an early release at the end of the day. Our kids are going to come in. They're going to focus on their test that we've been trying to prepare them for and help them out. Um, and when they're done with it, their day is going to be over. That's going to be our focus. Now, on my end right now, what that means is I have about 35 classrooms that I'm figuring out where to put students. We have to get the word out to where students go. I'm working with our instructional specialist who manages our special ed students. And she's got to find all her classrooms and she's lining that up. It is, it is a complex and enormous task. If you were to do this and be like, way better in Arizona Merit, that's, you could argue for, for either, to be honest, in terms of what my work's like. I feel like right now, though, this has much more value for a lot of people. Um, but it's, it's actually quite a complicated thing, and we are including all our staff, and I feel like that's a component that's been missing. Arizona Merit has fallen greatly on English and math um, to, to kind of bear the brunt of that and the test coordinator, and part of that was I don't want personally as a test coordinator to throw that at everybody in the school I, because I know it was disruptive to people, but um, we've been able to really sell this to our staff and get them involved. We actually had a department meeting the other day trying to figure out how are we going to register kids for pre-ACT. Is it okay if we do a new schedule? I know it'll be disruptive. People say, hey, whatever we got to do. And then our English teachers say, why don't we do all of it? We can get that done. I mean, so we've had a lot of buy-in. We've had a lot of sacrifice from people saying, whatever we need to do to do this right, we're going to do, which is, which is really reassuring because that makes me believe it's going to be successful. Um, our Aspire results, we're going to share out with parents. Um, we have a lot of, a lot of parents who already um, asked for those, and we're going to try to find a more systematic way to share this data back out to parents. Um, demographic information is, is very helpful for our district and for our, local, or our site administration, which is one of the things we can draw out of this very quickly, which was a little more difficult with Arizona Merit. Um, and we actually have, with our formative Aspire anyway, item analysis and standards results, which, which our teachers can actually get into the system. They'll be like, hey, question A, or question one, sorry, is the same standard as question 27, but 85% of the kids got question one correct, and 13% of them got question 27 wrong, uh, correct, right? What's the deal? It's the same standard. They can click on the question, and they'll be like, oh, I see. There's some vocabulary in there they don't know, or we haven't talked about this yet. Um, and so that's been, been very powerful for our teachers. And what's also nice about it is the, this is actually kind of what the report looks like. I FERPA approved it. I hope oh, I did. Um, we actually, this is for our Aspire. We get these benchmark results here. This tells us whether a kid at their freshman level is on track to meet an ACT benchmark, which, you know, 20 range. You can, you can just kind of estimate if you want. Um, one of the cool things is we get this text complexity component right there. It's a little blurry. I'm sorry for that. Um, we get that text complexity report, which is actually very useful across department. Our modern language people have looked at that. Our um, CTE people have looked at that because everybody needs to read. And how can we all support that um, in our classrooms has been the question. 
And there's also a percentile rate for everybody who's taken the test, which I actually think is very cool. I have students who say, well, you know, I got a little tired, so on the science test, I just kind of guessed. And I was like, that's okay, because you can tell your mom and dad why you got a 13th percentile rank on the science test when you get home. You know, and it sort of adds a little bit of teeth to it, and it adds a little bit of depth to that conversation about placement. You know, are we in the right courses? Is there something else we need to do for you? You know, if I have an outlier, I'm like, wow, you know, you seem to struggle in class, and you're in the 10th percentile for math. Maybe honors geometry isn't a great place for you. You know, and that's, and that's been a challenge. You know, I'm like, is this just something I'm not able to identify? We have another data point. We really didn't have that before. Um, what we're working on now is just corroboration of data. I mean, just for example, we've been lining up um, how, this is just kind of me playing around. That's just the math one, for example. How do they do on their fall aspire? We'll add their new aspire category in April pretty soon here. Um, FHS ACT scores from the past. This is, I think, percent at benchmark just for math here. And what's the national ACT average? You know, and it's, it's one of those things you just kind of, you compare to yourself, but I, I'm just comparing as much because, to be honest, when we gave Aspire, we're like, I don't really know what this means. I don't know if we did good or bad. I don't know if we're getting better or, or not. And so we're trying to figure out, we're corroborating and trying to say, what, where are we really at and where, um, where do we really need to go? There is, um, one of the challenges is the cost of implementation which, you know, there was some implication that at least certain aspects of this may be funded in part or at least some level by the state, which I, I hope they, they do pursue that. Um, there is uncertainty with state and federal requirements. Uh, there's always uncertainty with state and federal requirements. I, I would just say, um, you know, uh, evaluate that based off of what your goals are. You know, you're, you're going to be restricted by, by what your resources are always, you know, so um, I, we try not to make a decision based off of what our restrictions are. Sometimes I think we, we jump ahead of the cart a little bit and are like, let's make this decision and see if our district will pay for it, you know, kind of thing. Um, which it worked this time, so. Um, standard and curricular alignments. That's, that's our big one. That's, that's the next big one. Um, there's also one we didn't include up here, but I am the upper bound sponsor at the high school too. And so I work with TRIO program, which is a um, first generation college program. And their federal grants are dependent on how students perform on state-mandated tests. And this has added a level of complexity for them. The Arizona Merit itself, though, created a lot of issues for these programs. And so realize, I guess, that this does not happen in a vacuum. And you're going to have a lot of stakeholders that you may or may not um, think about when you make this decision. You know, and try to include people in that decision. Um, try to include those like Rel West and these groups that work with your school and find out what their perspective is and how this is going to affect them. You know, and just because it may not work well for one of them doesn't mean not to do it, but it is something to think about because this has changed um, our Upward Bound program at our school, having Coconino and Flagstaff High School move to this some, some, in some positive ways, but it's also created challenges too because now the schools they serve are not all doing the same test. Um, and then staff training. You know, there's some simple, simple staff, staff uh, trainings of uh, how do we teach you how to give the test, you know. Um, but it's also how do, we, how do we teach you how to understand what this curriculum data means. How do we teach you how to become part of this system. You know, how do we pull you out of your, your zone of comfort and bring you in to participate and support this implementation. Which we got to do staff training pretty soon, Diane. Write that down. Um, <laughs> So we're baselining data right now. We're crosswalking standards. And like I said, I think there's a level in that ACT curriculum beyond that. You know, we're in that crosswalk, but I think we need to get deeper as, as departments at our own school, um, you know, and probably collectively as, as educators. Um, just how do we really dig in and, and find out how we can better serve everybody with that? And then just establishing those goals. Um, school goals have been difficult for the last few years. You know, we used to have very, we'd have smart goals and they'd have a specific measurement. We knew exactly when and stuff, but things have been in a lot of flux and so school goals have been a challenge. Um, but right now what we're looking at is we're baselining that data, hopefully to say, you know what, 45% proficient on this category is a good goal. You know, we don't really know what that is right now. That's what we're trying to figure out. Um, you know, uh, 1,600 kids take the test, 1,500 of them achieve this score. That's a good goal. Right? And once, we, once we know that, hopefully that can guide our, our goal setting and then we can reach back and figure out how we can meet those, those goals. 
Um, so that's my email address up there. Um, I, I don't work for ACT, but I, I feel like I'm trying to sell this to a lot of people. I was excited to see if anybody from ACT is here who would like to pay me for my services, I'm happy to take your, take your money. But um, I, I was excited to see so many schools that have actually latched onto this. I feel like this is something that in a sort of a grassroots way can, can um, affect a lot of positive change in our state. And, and maybe we can drive the focus a little bit is sort of how I feel. If we can show that there's efficacy in this, and, and that it's serving students and that this could be a potential viable option for our, for our state. I think our board is open to that. Um, but I think it depends on schools doing their best with it and trying to show them what, what the power of this is. So um, I have like this grand uh, <laughs> 10 years down the road thing, you know, where we're, we're a little more focused on our test. But, um, you know, please reach out. I think these other schools that have been doing this for a while or kind of, you know, learn from my mistakes ask what we've done. There's a lot of complexity to it. I'm, I'm learning it all as it goes right now, but please, um, you can email me, or call the high school and be like, what was that test coordinator's guy? I, he I heard him at the conference and I needed uh, something answered. I'm happy to help you any way I can. Email Diane too. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Question in the back. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah. Do you assign them something like your college application, or do you assign them something they have to do? Well, you know, to be honest, I think they're, they're um, we plan that right around their uh, ditch day <laughs> schedule. So, you know, to be, to be honest, I, I don't think right now there's a specific thing. We, we talked about um, some systems where maybe some groups, like in terms of our, our freshman students, to give you an idea, we only have enough devices at once to test about half our students. And it's an online test. And so what we actually did was contacted this uh, speaker who comes in and talks to kids about goal setting. And so for a couple of hours, half of our freshmen are going to be with this guy, and then we're going to flip. But this is why I'm losing my mind. And so, um, but, but so we, we had conversations though. Well, could they go down and work on their ECAPs? Could they do this? But the problem always was like, no, wait a minute, the counselors are going to be assisting with ACT. You know, and so it was like, it was very resource intensive. Um, and so um, the seniors being home actually was freeing up a quarter of our staff to help us in a sense. And so right now, to be honest, they're sort of getting a day off. Um, we love them and we're just rewarding them. Yeah. So, so right now, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of where we're at. You know, in the future, if, if we have more resources or a, a different implementation plan, there might be something in there for them. Right now, it's kind of like, hey, that was your ditch day. We hope you had fun while everybody else was testing kind of thing. So, Thank you. Yeah. So uh, when you get the data back for the Aspire or the pre-ACT or the ACT, what does that look like in terms of reviewing those scores with students so that they understand? Is it happening in a classroom through teachers? Is it a counseling lesson? Like, how are you guys basically doing score interpretation for students? So we don't know for pre-ACT yet because we haven't done that. For Aspire, we got that out to teachers right away because we saw in that system, we're like, wow, this is really, really helpful information. And teachers actually began to share that out with their students almost immediately. We don't have a formal system yet for who the stakeholders who get that are, how we want to get that out to them. We, we sort of just decided right away, we need to get this out to people as mm -hmm. fast as possible. Um, Diane can talk to you about ACT because that's a much more formal process. So what we've started doing, um, and we, we've, up to this year, we've had sort of an advisory time period, um, and it's been an extension of our second hour. And we, we kind of got away from that, but came back to it recently as we've been doing the ACT boot camp. So our boot camp has been an extension of second hour. And what um, I've been talking with our principal, Mr. Cohen, about is coming back after when we have that data and having our teachers who were helping those students because we had it pretty grade, um, uh, divided by grade for a boot camp, um, having those teachers then review the results with students. But it will mean that we will be responsible for some professional development with those teachers in order for them to go step by step through those scores with individual students. So we, we know that's coming. <laughs> so, so, what, so when you're doing this, this during a regular school day with your advisory, what did you have your, your other students doing or was, were all students involved in that piece? 
Um, it was it was funny because I, I came in one Monday and they were like, here's what we want to do. Can you come up with a schedule? And I was like, this is, I don't get paid for this. So, well, and, and what we've done, you know, we actually had a lot of conversations about that. And to be honest, we wanted to do something. And I think it was one of those ideas that was a, a good idea. And we were like, there was still a lot of question marks for us with it. But our seniors do, um, one of our counselors or teachers um, had the idea to do um, a character strong thing, which is kind of a, a character program from a motivational speaker who's visited our school. And so they're actually going into different classes. We kind of re redid our schedule a little bit, and they go to this advisory class for 40 minutes on Wednesdays. And um, seniors will do that character strong. Everybody else is actually doing the ACT thing. Now, we talked about freshmen don't really take the ACT um, sophomores too we have a lot of mixed level classes like everybody does and so that was a little bit of a challenge but we decided you know we'll if, if you're not a senior you're going to be focused on this act prep because the strategies still apply and to be honest i teach a, a mostly freshman honors geometry course and in a 15 minute practice test most of them got through like question 20 or 21 and talking to them they felt like about 18 or 19 they knew how to do the act is built in reverse you know and so it worked out okay because of that that these, um, that our students, even as freshmen, can experience that. What we might want to do in the future, though, is can we more target those, you know, what's really more appropriate for freshmen in terms of their content and what might be helpful for them to start learning now and scaffold that a little more. So it, it's sort of in the experimental stage. I think it's been, it's been pretty effective. I actually have a group of students I work with on it, and I've, I've enjoyed it, and they seem to be taking some positives out of it. But that, those are juniors as well, so I've, I've heard some different things from freshman teachers and stuff. But that'll be something we work on in the future, I think. Yes? Your advisory period, do you guys have it every day, once a week, twice Just a week? Wednesday. We have, Just Wednesday. We have half-day Wednesdays for, like, teacher collaboration. And so we sort of um, took some time out of our classes. Mm -hmm. At Flagstaff High School, we used to have advisory. Um, we, we've attempted to have it in different iterations for, for different reasons and things. And it was always just kind of a challenge of figuring out how to support it. But um, we felt like for an eight-week kind of in, uh, boot camp, we called it program for ACT, we could get some support for it. And it's gone pretty well. Yeah? So you're a math guy. And you talked curriculum. So I want to do a little history. Right? So 100 years ago when I taught algebra, <laughs> nobody cared what algebra was except for me. And I taught what I thought was important or whatever the book called yeah. was important. And then Ames told me to tell like what math algebra stuff was important. And then AZ Mary told me what algebra stuff yes. was important. Uh huh. How do you use ACT to decide what algebra stuff is important? That's, that's exactly the, the curriculum question we're wrestling with right now. You know, the good news is enough of it is, I, I feel like, the same. You know, you're kind of like, okay, at, at a certain point, math is math, but it's, it's how it's being assessed. You know, what we really have to do is look at the questions, you know, and the practice tests and things like that and say, is there something in here in that interpretation? I'll give you a perfect example for math um, is working with numbers. Is, is pretty heavy on the ACT because what they want to see is can students find efficient, fluent ways to solve problems. The, the ACT is a test of, um, of fluency of thought, you know, in a lot of ways. It's not, it's not a test of do you know every single thing ever or vocabulary. It's a test of um, do you know enough to find the best way to do this, this thing here, you know. And so that's, that's sort of a shift. It's a shift in thought process. Um, and um, it's, it's sort of a, a, a mild shift that we realized, like, hey, you know what? This uh, working with square roots, for example, may have gotten shifted out with our standards because is it the most important thing in the world? Maybe not. But is working with numbers going to strengthen our kids' progress down the road? And the answer is, yeah. That number sense was so important, and it was something that got shifted down grade levels and moved out and things. And so we're identifying those spots. I, I give you an example of my geometry. About 85% of it I can leave alone. Some of it's not tested. It's an honors geometry class. I know they're not going to see it on the ACT. They might see it on Arizona Merit. But in any case, I'm like, it's not going to hurt them. I know it's above level, which is good. But then there's other spots where I'm like, you know what? The ACT really focuses on how to relate these geometric expressions in variable terms. And that's just something that now I have to include. Um, and so we've, we've been digging for resources, to be honest with you. We look at those Aspire questions. What do those look like? Um, we start with those crosswalks, you know, but then we're like, well, what does that mean to them? You know, how, what did it mean on Arizona Merit? What does it mean to me? What does it mean on here? And so, so we're literally just going through every, every viable resource that we have trying to understand that interpretation. That's where that curricular support, I think, is going to become really important for us. I hope I answered your question. Perfect.